edge. We do that. All right, show us your tips. Friday night preview. Uh, Dag and Beaver are with you back after a bit of a break there. Uh, what's cracking, Beaver? Oh, mate, uh, ready and rearing to get into Cox Plate Day. Very exciting and uh, another great day's racing heading our way. Absolutely. So we're going to get stuck into Roundwick and Mooney Valley in our next show. If you're watching this one, it, that'll be the most recent show. But uh, this will be our midweek, uh, uh, contractually obliged midweek preview. So we're going to get stuck into the revamped Friday night. The Manicato's moved to Saturday. So the Mooney Valley Gold Cup and the JRO Plate take centre stage here. Not a bad little cart. Uh, the track is in uh, the in a good in a good four. The rail is in the true at the moment, listed as rail in true for both days. Do you know if that's the case? Is that the plan? I th believe it I is. I think so. I think it's only Flemington they make the decision after the last on the first first day of the carnival. So uh, interesting. Going to be interesting to see how that pans out across twenty races or eighteen races. But we kick off. Beaver with a thousand meter benchmark seventy, and this is a pretty good little benchmark seventy to start us off. Yeah, it's uh, not a bad little affair here. Some horses coming into this with some some decent form. There's three that are probably fairly equal in the market here and uh, hold the key. I think um, I've I've stuck with Rubicon Crossing. Mm -hmm. uh, the New Zealander that came over um, had the one start at Mornington uh, when resuming, and I thought that was pretty impressive. Uh, I think it's going to be almighty hard to beat here after after some group decent group form in New Zealand. Um, got to deal with the, the the wide gate here, the nine gate over the thousand. So um, it's the widest in the draw, but uh, hopefully it can get somewhere decent in the run and um, show its class. I thought there's three hopes, uh, and I'm surprised at the price of the third hope. I'm going to put it on top in Croatian Bell. I think it's been a bit forgotten here. It was uh, did some nice stuff early as a two-year-old, had a nice enough run behind its inhibitions three months back, freshened up, really impressive trial since, and it's uh, nearly an each-way price. Well, it is an each-way price, nearly a double-figure price, I should say. Uh, and I'm going to put it on top of that price from Rubicon Crossing, who was very impressive making its Australian debut, didn't beat a great deal. And Salui was very impressive resuming as well. Again, didn't beat a great deal. I just thought some of those form lines through Croatian Bell just looked a little bit stronger to my eye. Um, but we'll watch and learn in the first. The second is a 1,500-metre Vobus Gold Star Race. And this is – well, this is one for pack chasers here. I um, – Found it very hard to get excited about this one. I have gone and put I'm a Shelby on top. Uh, had issues last time out. The r rider reported it didn't handle the very firm surface. Went away, trialled really well. Gets Mickey D. Could lead this race or sit right on regards and reads back. Uh, if it does, I think around a seven bucks is a reasonable bet. I think regards and reads the main danger, as the market suggests. And Umagawa. If it's ever going to win another race, which is a phrase I'm going to use a bit tonight, uh, this is it. But they are all starting to feel like pack chases to me. Uh, and at least Armour Shelby's had a win in the last uh, 12 months. What do you think? Yeah, I thought the same as you. Uh, they are a bit pack change, uh, chases, these ones. And I kind of went up and down and up and down looking for something. I went, uh, I'm going to go for the fresh form in to be sure. Mm-hmm. Um, just so it, it goes well first up. It's only it's had four first up efforts, one one and three placings. So it comes comes to form pretty quickly there. Obviously likes to get out a bit further distance here, but I'm just hoping it might get the sitting shot on these and uh, round them up. So that's that's the way I've gone. Not any confidence, but I uh, couldn't have any confidence anything else. And I think Ungawa might be the main chance for to get that next elusive win. Um, if I was looking for something else. Cool. It's a little bit almost at the stage that anything Damien Lane jumps on, you've got to elevate as well. Uh, he's yep. top jockey there. Uh, well, part of the top three with Mickey D and Blake Sheen, and they have a lot, a lot on the rest of the field down there now. Uh, anyway, the third is a 1,200-metre benchmark 80, speaking of which one of them jumps on the favourite here. Blake Sheen jumps on Port Albert. I don't really like this race, but I thought the form lines around Port Albert a uh, fairly irresistible on paper. That's dancing alone uh, before that chased Vivienne um, comes back to a bush race. 
all things being equal, I understand it being favourite. Don't want to charge in. Look, I'm not not doing uh, jumping for joy about it, but I I think so. I think the price around three fifty, fair enough. What do you think? No, I'm pretty keen on Rich Lover here. Uh, gets a two kilo claim here for Ramu Pin. Um, form's pretty good at recent. Uh, it was a nice front last start at uh, Sale, and then wasn't that far behind a decent horse in Von Hawk, who was absolutely murdered oh. Daggy yesterday by Jamie. Don't, don't even start me. Uh, that was that was one of the worst I've seen in a long time. So uh, I think Von Hawk would go pretty close to winning this, and Rich Lover wasn't far behind it, so um, got it on top. Fair enough. Yeah, I um. I can't. Jamie Carr's just unbackable at the moment. Uh, I we'll leave it at that, shall we? We'll move on to the fourth, yeah. uh, which is yeah. uh, the benchmark. Uh, benchmark seventy eight, nine hundred and fifty five meters. We've lost a re- Alicia Roma, which makes the case for the favourite pretty irresistible here. Frilled. Uh, she's four from four. She won over the course and distance last month, and that was in second gear, and that was a, probably a stronger race, at least as good a race, mm. and uh, never really looked like she was troubled. Uh, Alicia Rome, I thought, was going to be the fly in the ointment. She's not here. I think she goes around and goes five from five, Beaver. Yeah, I think you're right. Inside gate as well only adds to that. Um, straight to the front, uh, burns the turf, and, uh, yeah, they they won't be beating him, I don't think. No. Uh, as a mark, if you're doing an early quarter, the market's got the right second favourite in twin perfection, but it'll have a job to do. The fifth is a 1,200-metre listed affair, the Chautauqua Stakes. Can you let you have a crack at this one? Well, um, look, I don't think – I think it's too hard to go past She Dances, um, to be honest. Uh, that was uh, – bounced back to its best form last start, um, sat outside them and and still still won um, and won quite convincingly there. Uh, that There was a lot to like about that. I think gate two here probably finds it going straight to the front. Um, and we know how good it is uh, up front and rolling. And again, uh, I think uh, this is right up its alley and uh, too good for these. Yeah, benefited from being just absolute perfect spot last time out in a stronger race. And she's going to be absolute perfect spot again. Uh, I love Linda Meach on her because if there is no other options, she'll go straight to the front. Uh, and if there is a pace battle, she'll just camp on the back of you know, maybe some Samillion or someone will want to go forward again, but she'll make the right decision and uh, we'll win again. I don't, I don't see how anything else here beats her. So better than that for me is she dances in the fifth. The six is the JRA Cup uh, 2040 Group 3 race uh, at uh, quality handicap level. And I'm going to make a case here. I, I think it's now time for Forgot You. Uh Pulled up with EIPH last time. Those are my favourite four letters in the racing dictionary. Uh, we saw Arkansas Kid come out and win off it again last week. Uh, pulled up with that issue. Blake Shin's now jumped on. It's now fifth up off a recovery prep, uh, off the injury, and will just be in the right spot with the right jockey. And this is its race, this preparation. So I'm going to make the case here. Forgot you. Obviously scared of Ain't No Deal Done, who did beat at home last time, and he's airborne and was probably put away for this. Uh Two clearly on top from uh, – those are the two clear chances. I think Sabak will lead uh, and run third in the trifecta here, Beaver. But what are you thinking? No, I can't. Uh, I've been on Ain't No Deal Done the last uh, couple of starts and I'm not getting off now. Um, gate six is ideal here. Uh, the speed will track along nice enough. Uh, it is only a small field, so – be unlucky to get cluttered up here and uh, is the best finisher in the race. I think it can get into the running line. I forgot you's probably going to have to sit behind it now um, and it won't it won't go past it. Does it back up into the long black or whatever that race is? Maybe a, a race at Melbourne Cup Week, whatever that other staying race is on Cup uh, Something like that can run well enough. I, I would... I would expect so if it wins this. Mm. Um, I think that's something that they'd probably have their eye on. Uh, yeah, no, but uh, definitely, definitely could not talk you out of it if that's the way you went. Uh, the seventh is the feature, the Mooney Valley Gold Cup, a uh, group two over 2,500 metres and uh, big field. Who have you found on top? 
Yeah, interesting race this one. Um, I've stuck with Luna, Luna Flair here. Uh, I think it's now primed and ready to go uh, for this race. Uh, obviously, uh, a vast array of, of uh, stayers here. Um, before it was sent out, won really, really well. And they've been really selective here, the way that they've lined this up for, for the cup. Um, brought it back in the group two over 1600, uh, ran quite nicely. Probably a little bit disappointing behind Alligator Blood. Um, uh, back at Caulfield, two starts back, um, but then started to show a nice turn of foot um, at Flemington. Last start behind Gold Trip was sort of well back in the field on the turn, 14th or 15th in the run, and finished fifth, only four lengths off him. Um, that, that was really, really strong and really good form line for this. Um, goes well this track, loves this distance, and uh, if it's going to figure in Melbourne Cup contention, it needs to win this, and I do think it is a genuine Melbourne Cup chance. Okay. Wow. It, it, and she's going, isn't she? She's off the Rams, did not the win, and she's going, definitely yep. going to Melbourne That's Cup. Right. That's right. The win, that was the win before sent for a spell. Yes. Um, cool. And, of course, we're going to do a runner-by-runner runner look at that. Speed will be down there for the Cup, but we're going to do a runner-by-runner runner Look at the Melbourne Cup. That'll be coming up next uh, Sunday evening. Uh, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, uh, anything else here you want to add? Or are you th- you're just pinning your hopes of the mayor? No, no, I'm just pinning my hopes there because I think the form of a lot of the others is just all over the joint, to mm-hmm. be honest. I just can't I just can't work it out. Um, and I just think the rest uh, past their best or have never really shown enough to suggest that they can uh, figure I'm going to make the case again for future history. I mentioned it when it won last time out. Uh, we get these staying races where they just become farcical paces up front and it's got at least it's got the ability to be there. It's going to camp either on Knights or back or it's going to lead. Uh, and you know Craig Williams will, will make that right decision. Uh, and I'm actually shocked it's not shorter in the market. I thought around a $7 market, it, uh, it's a very good bet. So just given that setup, I've got it on top. Um, I think Athabaskan improves. It comes through the farcical race at one, uh, but now it gets gate one, Damien Lane. Uh, Damien Lane won't be too far away, though. I think it sits a lot closer. Runs well. You mentioned Luna Flair, uh, grand final in a couple of weeks. And I think Cleveland's the fresh blood on the scene. At least comes through some proper staying races. Gets J-Mac, uh, but he's two years between wins and um, might just be another pack chaser. Did look a little bit that way <laughs> at Flemington, at Roundwick class start, but... I think Future History and Luna Flair, if you're going to cover both, is a great way to play this race. How did you line up the John Cup? Terror. Uh, you know the horse I'll take out of it? And uh, is the Waller horse, the widest runner, whose name just escapes me. Mickey D was on it. Uh, it's shit. It's done. I don't want to do anything with it. But that track and the wind was not good. That Like nothing that came wide could win. Uh, there's another horse I want to follow. Love a zoo. Should, like, on a fair track, bolts in. Uh, you could see them actually, all those horses, widest and a couple in, as they peeled off and hit the wind, they just stopped like they were shot. And uh, I thought, what's its name? More felons? More felons, maybe? I don't think it can win the Melbourne Cup, but I think it's the only horse I want to take out. When it's a blanket finish like that and they're all running into the wind, I just think there's. I think, uh, explain to me. F- first of all, it was been to- forever and had to cop Jamie Carr. Can, it, it can you crap. explain to me what. What the go with that, that ride was in the twenty four hundred meters into the wind, sat outside the lead. First immortal. Yeah. I uh, jockey error is what I was saying. Had to be. So what, what do you want to say? It had yeah. to be. It, it was. Well, I, I mean, I don't even know why it went forward. It has it has sat close to the pace and won. It's it sat leaders back for him and bolted in a couple back, uh, but it it uh, never looked comfortable being there. Uh, was sort of revved up and then pulled up and then just was didn't feel comfortable the whole time. If you're on it, which I was, uh, I she made a move about 300 metres in. I thought I've, I've done my money already here. Uh, yeah, well, that's the same as me. And then I, I got excited because I, I thought I, I, I had copped that, the, that Waller thing and it, it chimed in like it was going to win by three lengths and hit the wall and um, – they all did. I don't really want to touch it. I, I don't think that was a strong race. Uh, I assume first of all was going to the paddock and congratulations to what, who won, Ahmad and the connections, but I don't 
we can, we can just pen that race as a lead up. I don't even know if it's still in cup markets. First Immortal? Yeah. I don't think so. It would need some to fall over now, wouldn't it? You can no, tell still, how much. Still uh, in the cup markets. You can tell how much background I've uh, research I've done away from what we're going to talk about tonight. Um, yeah, it's still oh, 20s in the cup. Is there an order of entry for it? Uh, they're down to. Here we go. Let me have a look here. Talk amongst yourselves, punters. Uh, without a fight's in, absurds in, lunar flares in, future histories in. Uh, we go down to. Uh, anyway, I, I think. Not in I the think if it is in, I don't. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have wanted it oh, sorry, because that would have 35th. taken too much out of it. It's thirty fifth on fifty yeah. kilos. I reckon they spell it now. Yeah, that would have taken a lot out of it. I agree. Agree. Anyway, here we go. Um, yeah, would you even want to back if it goes to that long black or the Mac, whatever that twenty eight hundred meter run is? Cup day? Would you back yeah, there? Probably not. Probably nah, not. it's a bit that way, isn't it? Uh, anyway, that's yeah. That that's a, a fascinating insight of what we're going to ramble on with in our Melbourne Cup preview. Uh, out of the last is a mile benchmark 78 and shock me serious blacks actually led the last two races and has won two in a row who would have thought that could happen um amazing what happens when you go forward in some of these uh walking races uh, if it does it again i think it wins again it's on top the only possible danger is far flung if swoopers are in play uh it was given none at caulfield last time out uh, if swoopers are in play it's come it did have a nice win here before uh this is a hollow race and um that's it for me, Beaver. Yeah, right. you're right. It is a whole race. It's very ordinary. There's only the two chances. Um, forget the rest. And you're right, depending on how the track's playing, if there's a bit of favouritism to the leaders, dearest black, and if they can swoop, uh, far flung. Uh, that's the way I'd play it as well. How easy is punning, eh? Uh, the... Are we doing a quaddy? Do we do a quaddy on these shows? You can do one if you want. No. All right. No. I feel like I've cheated everyone. I'll do one for you. Race uh, in the fifth, three she dances. In the sixth, three forgot you, five, eight, no deal done. In the seventh, uh, four Athabaskan, seven future history, 12 Cleveland, 14 Lunar Flare. And in the last, four serious black and seven far flung. There you go. $12.50 and change. Uh, if you nail that on the night. Uh, your best in value for progetracing.com.au. Yeah, my best is race five, number three, She Dances on top. And my value bet comes up in race two, number six, to Bayshore. Beauty. Five by five, She Dances is my best, but I have a feel for race six, number three, Forgot You as well. My value in the first, race one, number three, Croatian Bell will run better than the market is currently suggesting. Uh, anything else on Friday for the punters while we've got this up Thursday night? Yeah, I've got one at Scone for the punters. My best there is race five, number two, Pyromania. Uh, I think that can be winning. And if we go over to the sunny coast, um, I've got race three, number 16, Prosperian. And then in race five, number three, Shooting for Gold, resuming. I saw that. I was just flicking before, the, before we got on air and... Um... Shooting for gold stuck out like a like a sore yeah, thumb. Good price, nearly five dollars. Mm, nice little race though. So, couple of de couple will give it a race. Uh, that's been it for progetracing.com.au. Of course, check them out. You would have seen the Geelong preview article up there. We do a couple of articles a week uh, away from these two shows, which are up each and every week for free. Of course, uh, Beaver's going to no doubt after this jump on and do a Friday article, which um, I haven't reminded him about. Uh, you may as well type up and let the punters know who's going to win the rest of Scone. And um, we'll be back very soon to look at the other 20 races from Saturday. Where we've got Ramwick, uh, where Beaver's going to tip another Masara Quinella. And, of course, the Cox Plate meeting. Look how excited he is to sound the alarm. <laughs> and uh, we've got the Mooney Valley program to talk about as well. Um, you know, small race called the Cox Plate. Thank you, Beaver. Back with you shortly. Good luck on Friday evening, punters.